And we are live. All right. Welcome, everyone. Aloha. Welcome to Hawaii virtually. And welcome, Carla. I want to make sure that um, you can hear everything's okay and you're ready to rock and roll. I can hear you and I am ready to rock and roll. Okay. Sounds good. Well, for those of you watching, I thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And I have a wonderful special guest today that um, I want to sh- I want you to all hear her story. So her name is Carla Grubb, and I'm going to read her bio. So so let's get started with that. Okay. All right. So Carla Grubb is a successful businesswoman, wife to Ryan, and mother of two wonderful daughters who are 16 and 11 years old. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's a interesting age that that was me saying that oh yeah it's not in the bio <laughs> i I'll know it's not in your bio right. she has been married for almost 20 years and has had a career that included ministry work sales and education 10 years ago she started an education business in education standardizing standardized testing called the finished product she built that business to making over a half million dollars a year and employing over 40 independent part-time contractors. Mm -hmm. Recently, she has started pursuing her passion, which is helping women to feel great about themselves while they lose weight. Her new program is called Weight Release and was born out of her own lifelong struggle with her own weight and self-acceptance issues. Weight release differs from other weight loss programs by eliminating dieting and instead addressing the complete woman through the pillars of healing, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. That's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, you, um, you've come a long way. That it- is for sure. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, so this is great because in this interview, I want you to be able to share with our viewers as much as you feel like you need to. Okay. Because you have a great story to share. So, what I want you to do is go back as far as you need to, even if from when you were a child, and and you just continue on as far as where you are now, like what brought you to this point to where you're at. And all the details that you feel um, other people would would um, benefit from hearing. Sure, thank you. Yeah, you're I, welcome. It was really neat when you um, when you asked for you know to see if I wanted to come on your Facebook Live and talk about this, and you talked about mm-hmm. um, being a person of impact and what is your why and what is it that mm-hmm. really. Um, makes you want to do what you do. And then to have the opportunity to tell my story to people, I'm just very grateful. So thank you for having me on today. Absolutely. And, um, You're welcome. And it is neat to share my story. There's a lot there. <laughs> I asked Ann, and how long do you want me to go? Because, you know, this could be like a three hour story. <laughs> we won't do that version. <laughs> There's a lot there. You know, when you've lived a good number of years on this planet, mm-hmm. you've had a few experiences. But yeah. I, I do want to share the part of my story that kind of leads up to the bio that you just read, Mm -hmm. um, specifically the why about the new thing that I'm doing, because I do have a lot of varied backgrounds in ministry work and in sales and in education, um, my family background, but all of that has kind of come full circle for me into this new venture that I'm excited about. And I will be Mm -hmm. honest with you, I was not planning on this this year. I think a lot of people in 2020 can say that. Mm-hmm. Right? I yeah. wasn't really planning on this happening this mm-hmm. year in 2020 when we were all on January 1st making our goals for the year or whatnot. You know, we none of us mm-hmm. anticipated that life would be going this way. Um, yeah. But it's exciting to see how how it happened. So yeah, let me take you back. Um, I grew up in the United States, uh, mostly all on the East Coast in different different states. My father was in the Navy. And so we moved quite a bit when Mm -hmm. I was growing up. 
he got out of the Navy when I was fairly young. But we still, every four or five years, we would move to a new place. And in one of the moves, um, when we moved to a new home in Northern Virginia, which I love Virginia, and I still, I live in Virginia again now. I wouldn't say still because uh-huh. I moved around a lot, but I'm back in Virginia and I love it here. It's beautiful. But when we first moved to Virginia, I was, I'm not sure, it was going into fourth grade. So whatever age that is, maybe around 10. Um, mm-hmm. I, uh, nine or 10, I was really lonely and I had been very popular at my old school. I had a lot of friends. I was a very confident young girl there. Mm-hmm. Um, but when we moved, I had a really hard time making friends. And mm-hmm. uh, then I moved schools again right away. So I was in one school for fourth grade, had a really hard time making friends. Yeah. And then I moved again for, I didn't move, but they sent me to a different school for fifth grade mm-hmm. um, and sixth grade. And then we went to another school for middle school, right? So there was a lot of yeah transition during that time. Mm -hmm. And so I was really having a hard time finding my footing. And during that time, since I was lonely, I started eating, right? I kind of let food become my friend. And so since I was bored and I was lonely, back then we didn't have internet, right? (laughs) I I wasn't streaming, I wasn't binging Disney Plus. I would like a kid today would. (laughs) I was out, I was outside a lot. You know, this was what, Mm the 1980s. So back when kids were allowed to just ride their bike up to the store and do whatever. And you didn't have to worry. Right, Mm -hmm. exactly. Which was, there were so many great things about that growing up during that time. But I, um, but what I started doing is I would uh, get money from wherever I could get it from, you know, if my parents left change out or whatever, um, I would gather up whatever little money I could and I would go to the store and I would buy candy bars or Cheetos or I would mm-hmm. go to the 7-Eleven and get a Slurpee and um, junk food. And then I would just find somewhere and go sit and read a book and eat my junk food. And that was how I entertained myself. And it was almost like the food became my friend during that time. And um And obviously, with that kind of a habit, as I entered into my teenage years, my mother, who's a wonderful lady, but she expected, oh, she's just going through puberty. You know, as she grows up, Mm -hmm. she'll thin out. But I didn't. (laughs) I just kept gaining weight and gaining weight and gaining weight. And so by the time I was starting high school, I weighed over 200 pounds. And, um, and my mother was great. And both my parents tried to help me however they could, but they didn't really know what to do back then. Yeah, and back then it was different. We didn't have all the information no, we have now. We did mm-hmm. not. And especially even back then, like looking at my journey now with all that I know now, mm-hmm. most of the dietary advice that was given back then was really poor advice. It yeah. was usually, you know, eat low fat and, um, you know, just just reduce your calories. And um, Mm -hmm. so throughout high school, I did a a few different diets, like my mom and I and my mother had, you know, her own battles with weight. And so Mm -hmm. sometimes we would do things together, like she would help try to help me. Um, So we, you know, we tried the well, I won't name certain plans, but we tried a lot of different things. (laughs) None of it worked for me. (laughs) <laughs> um, but I, I tried like the shakes and I tried the calories and I tried the, you know, the programs where you buy the food and they give you like the box food and you eat the box food and nothing okay. really did much for me. And then I went off to college and halfway through college, I um, I had a, a kind of an awakening, like I'm going to really get serious about this in my life. And I had a major mind shift. And um, I started, I put myself on a very strict diet at that time. Well, let me just ask you a question, not to interrupt your story, but what do you think was it that brought you to that point of that mind shift and making that decision that you wanted to, to do something or change something or like, what, what do you think it was? Well, it's, I'll be honest with you. The reason I glossed over it is that it wasn't really a healthy thing. So maybe it's good that you asked and I'll share it in a way maybe people can understand. I, at the time I was part of a, um, 
an organization that had some really unhealthy spiritual practices. And um, basically, I was actually, I'm really glad you asked. I was basically shamed at that time for being overweight, very, oh. very strongly, and made to feel that if it didn't change, that I was unacceptable spiritually. And so that was the deep motivation for me. And that's not a healthy motivation. Um, mm. But it worked at the time in that it made me go, okay, I'm going to, I have to change this in order to be accepted both mm -hmm. at the time I thought by these people in my life, but also I really believed what they were saying that spiritually um, that God would not accept me or love me wow. without me changing this. Um, so, and, and it's, it's sad that that happened to me, but it, I think it's an important part of my journey and it is part of my why now mm -hmm. because I really um, deeply, deeply, feel strongly that women who are obese, particularly, um, that have struggled with their weight for years and years and years, there is often a deep sense of shame there that they uh -huh. carry. Uh -huh. Like mm. there is a sense of guilt of I'm a failure. I'm not good enough somehow. Society looks down on me. Mm. Um, there's a lot of that guilt wrapped up in that and, um, and I experienced that a lot when I was young, even before that time in college, you know, growing up in your teenage formative years, being really overweight, being over 200 pounds as a teenager mm -hmm. meant that I didn't get asked on dates, right? I never went Aww. to prom. I felt, now, let me say this, there are, there are women, there are young girls who are overweight and they don't have the same experience I did because a lot of it is how you feel about yourself, right? Mm -hmm. What I did is, especially during that time in the 1980s, there wasn't the obesity epidemic that we have today. So when I looked around, I didn't see other women, Whoa. other girls that were my size, right? For me to be overweight was very abnormal and it was very not accepted and not okay. And I felt like I was, um, like I was somehow, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like there was something wrong with me, right? There's oh. something wrong with me. Like all the other girls don't have this problem. And I do, I don't remember, I don't remember having friends in high school that had weight struggles. And that was difficult. I had one super, super good friend who also had the similar struggle in her life, but she was thinner mm -hmm. than I was. And we weren't in high school together. Like we had gone to middle school together and oh. then I, I moved again yeah. <laughs> to a new place mm -hmm. and I was not with her anymore. Yeah. Um, so there was like this deep sense of shame anyway that I was already carrying. So it's not like I felt great about myself and then other people gave me shame. I already felt it inside. And so when other people suggested that I was somehow unacceptable, I easily mm -hmm. took that on. Does that make sense? Um, yeah. You know, it's so, interesting because as a teenager, we're already going through, you know, teenagers go through this really hard time anyway. Hormones are changing. You yeah, don't that's know who true. You, are, you don't know if you're coming or going. And then to have that, that yeah. must have been even harder. Yeah, it was. It was really hard. Um, so, yeah, so here I was carrying all this shame and guilt. And then mm -hmm. to hear from somebody else, it was almost like somebody else voiced my deepest fear. Like I already felt that way. Oh. And so for somebody else to say or to imply that I was somehow unacceptable, like I heard it because I already really felt that way about myself. Um, oh. So, but to hear it from someone else that I really respected mm -hmm. Um, and saw as kind of a mentor and a guide was the catalyst to um, to really, I, I don't want to say get serious, but that's really what I did. Like, instead of kind of toying around mm -hmm. with dieting, I really dieted. And, um, and, and so I put myself on a very strict low calorie, low fat diet. Again, this was mid, mid 90s, early 90s. So that was the 
prevailing dietary wisdom at the time. That's what you should do. <laughs> if you want to lose weight, that's what you need to do. <laughs> you know? I wrote down everything I ate. I kept a journal. I didn't eat after a certain, after seven o'clock at night, I didn't eat anything. Um, and, and I was already fairly active because I was in college. I was walking around a lot on campus. Um, mm -hmm. But I started going to the gym more and started exercising more, especially as my weight did start to come down. I felt even more like, oh, okay, I I feel like more comfortable going into the gym and exercising or taking an aerobics class. Um, so my, I did end up losing 80 pounds during that time. And wow. so it took about probably about a year and a half, I would say to lose the 80 pounds. Did you tell anyone that you were trying to lose weight? Did anyone else know, or did you keep it to yourself? No, those, the people in my closest circle, they all knew that I was, that I was working on it, mm -hmm. but there was so much guilt involved in it. Even then, Janin, it was like, um, I remember this one time that I, I had been tracking my food carefully. I literally did not eat anything that would be considered junk food for months. Like I didn't eat wow. any of it, not a cookie, not a piece of pizza, nothing. And That's I remember incredible. this, this, well, it is, but it was out of guilt, right? It was out of like guilt and shame. Yeah. And it wasn't from a place of like, I'm going to treat myself well, and I'm going to be kind mm -hmm. to myself. And, um, but yeah, I mean, there's a myth out there that people that are overweight just don't have self-control or they're just lacking in willpower. That is absolutely not true. I will tell you that most women that I have gotten to know uh, mm -hmm. that have some serious weight issues, they have insane amounts of self-control and willpower, like insane, because they've been dieting for years. And most oh. of these diets are very strict, right? And they they hold to them and they do what they say. So it's, it's really interesting. Interesting. Um, yeah, the it is. That's, that's out there. No, thank you for saying that. No, it's true. I'm telling you, it really is true. Um, so yeah, so I didn't, but then I, I remember one night, um, it's college, right? I mean, we ordered pizza. So I decided <laughs> I'm going to let myself eat pizza. And I remember I had three slices of pizza. And I felt like I was just the worst person on the planet. And I remember I went and cried to somebody. I was like, I ate three pieces of pizza. And she was like, she was a thin person that had never struggled with weight in her life. And she was like, that's fine. <laughs> like, yeah. that's normal. <laughs> and, but just the difference in perspective, like to me, that was an, an unpardonable moral failing that I had eaten pizza. Um, yeah. And she she was like, and it's, it's a very different mindset that overweight women are carrying versus um, someone that hasn't really struggled in that area. They're like, Hey, you know, you eat pizza, that's fine. Then you just, you know, you eat healthy on other days and that's okay. It's not that big of a deal. But to me, it was a very big deal. Mm. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, I, I see promise not very the three emotional. hour version. It was so emotional, so emotional. Mm. So then there I was, I lost 80 pounds and I was a thin person on the outside. I'm not sure I was ever really thin on the inside. Um, at that time, I, I started getting attention from young men. And I remember the first time uh, a guy, a stranger whistled at me on the street and I was like, me? <laughs> like, was that at me? That was a new experience. And I remember telling a friend about it and she was like, uh, that's been happening to me my whole life. <laughs> like, I can't oh. believe this is something, you know, but for me, I had never thought of myself as attractive. And when, when boys started showing interest in me, I thought I'm, I'm not that girl. Like, why, why are they interested in me? I felt so mm -hmm. defective. That was the word I was looking for earlier. I felt so defective oh. and unwanted. That's an interesting word. Yeah, I felt very defective. And um, so I, but with this newfound confidence, I really did develop a lot of confidence that I had not had previously. Uh, as I got used to myself and I got used to being this new person, mm -hmm. um, I was a lot more confident. And I did a lot of things that I wouldn't have done before, just taking on more leadership roles and being more vocal, speaking up more. Um, just being just happier with myself overall. Mm -hmm. And um, I was 
like that for another eight years. I mean, I kept the weight off for a long time. But here's the thing. I was always dieting, always, always on a diet. Like it was constant vigilance. I could never just relax and enjoy eating. I always had to be thinking about what I was eating. I was always on a diet of some kind just to maintain the weight loss. It It was really difficult. It, oh, it did. It absolutely consumed me. It absolutely consumed me. Um, so that was all through my 20s. And then I met the love of my life, my husband. He is wonderful. And um, we met and got married fairly quickly. I was in my late 20s, and so was he. And then we were both working in the ministry uh, for a church. And they asked us to go and lead a small church together. It was like a church of 100 people in Memphis, Tennessee. And we um, we moved there literally the day after our honeymoon. We got married <laughs> and we went and led this church. That's and a great adventure to start it off. It was your a new great marriage. adventure. It was so stressful, Janine. So stressful. Oh. oh my goodness. Our stress levels were <laughs> through the roof. We put so much pressure on ourselves to do a good job Mm -hmm. and try to do everything right. And we didn't even hardly know each other. We had known each other less than a year. So we were still really getting Getting to to know know. each Mm -hmm. other. We were trying to figure out how to be married. We're in this new town making new friends. I mean, it was difficult. So how did we deal with the stress? Hmm. (laughs) We ate food. So here I am like having dieted strong for eight years, 10 years, always on a diet. And now I'm married to this man. And he'd be like, at 11 o'clock at night, he'd be like, hey, you want to go to McDonald's? You know, get a hamburger, get some ice cream. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I put on like struggle with his weight. Uh, he did, but not like I did. Like, you know, I mean, he's a man, right? So it comes off easier, <laughs> faster. Like he would just go to the gym, work out really hard. And I mean, yeah. he maybe was carrying an extra 10 or 20 pounds, but nothing, you know, nothing major. Nothing major. Mm-mm. And he was young still, so it came off easily. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, but not me. Mm-mm. Living that lifestyle, I started wow. putting on weight. Like it started coming back. And so the cycle just began like the the shame and the guilt. I probably gained about 20 pounds our first year of marriage. And I was scared. I was like, oh no, I'm going back in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. And I was again, constantly dieting, always looking for some other source of way to keep the weight off, even while it was slowly creeping back up. And then two years into marriage, I got pregnant, which was wanted, right? Like I totally wanted to get pregnant. We were trying to get pregnant. I wanted to have babies. The, my daughters are so worth it. But mm-hmm. with the first baby, all the weight came back on. We were, um, we were going through super hard times in our career. We were going through really difficult times um, socially and emotionally with the people around us. Oh. Um, my husband lost his job. Uh, so we ended up like, I kid you not, we ended up with no jobs and me seven months pregnant and uh, n- no house because we decided to move. So we were living with friends. So we were like, homeless. I mean, not homeless because we weren't on the street, but we were living at somebody else's house Mm -hmm. with no income, my husband, no job and a baby on the way. So I, oh, and I had um, no car because he would take the car out all day and go look for a job. And I would sit at home alone with no TV and no internet because the people we were living with didn't have much money. So they didn't have that stuff. They were gone at work all day. So I literally was home alone in the house all day. So what did I do? I ate. (laughs) Like oh. I ate my feelings. I ate brownies. Nice. I ate Lucky Charms. So I put on, um, I think, 60 pounds with my first baby and then just never really lost the weight after that and just kept, again, it was just this cycle of diet, 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 diet all the time. One of the things that I do with women that are joining my program now is I have them sit down and list out all the diets that they have been on and how many times that they've done each one, because that was an activity that I did for myself later on. And I was shocked to see it was over 46 diets. And when I made this list, I was like 42 years old, 46 times I had dieted. Like, 
That's crazy. Just like you said, it consumed me. It consumed me. So even though like I was raising my children successfully, I was trying to be a great wife. I was even building a successful business over the last 10 years. This one Mm -hmm. area of my life was just um, a source of such pain to me. So let me ask you real quick. Did your husband know that you were struggling with your weight all these years and that it consumed you? Did you have those Mm -hmm. conversations with him and was he supportive or what was happening with that? Yeah. So he was, he, he's been amazing. Actually. I'm so grateful for him. He knew, like he knew that I had had a weight problem before he met me. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think he didn't really comprehend it, you know, cause all he, he met me when I was thin. And so that's how he saw me. Um, but as the weight came on, he was very supportive of whatever I wanted to try. So I'd be like, I'm going to do this diet. And he'd be like, yeah. And sometimes he'd be like, I'll do it with you. You know, his thing was mm-hmm. though, he was an athlete when he was younger and he still really enjoys exercise and working out. And so he was always like, just go to the gym, just go to the gym. Like you just need to exercise more, right. like, just yeah. exercise more. And I'm like, that's yeah. not the answer yeah. for me. Like, no, that's really not it. And I was a person that I really didn't like exercising, Janin. Like I did not like it. Are you like that? Yeah. As I get older, I like it less. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Well, I'm the opposite, thankfully. I'm liking it more now. Um, <laughs> but you know what? I didn't I didn't realize, and I'm going to get to the good part soon. Oh, gosh. I can't believe how long this has taken. But, no, that's okay. Um, you know what? I want anyone watching to be able to identify with what you're saying because okay, I know there good. are people out there who have had lifelong struggles. So Yeah, it really, it really, yeah. really is. Share your, your precious story. So, because I'm getting to the good part. There is happiness. No, this whole thing is good. No, it, the whole um, thing is really good. I really thank love you. it. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for actually wanting to share and be open about it. Because thank it can you. be scary to share it out loud. Yeah, it's... um. So he was super supportive all those years. Like I said, he would encourage me to do different things. But he mm-hmm. never... Um, he never made me feel shame or guilt over it. And I would come to him and I would cry and be like, you know, I can't lose weight. And he would always be supportive and like, he wanted to help me, but he's never, um, he's never made me feel like, and I'm so grateful for that, that I have not, the love in my life has never made me feel bad. You know what um, it sounds like? It sounds like he loves you for Mm -hmm what's in your heart and what's in your mind, you know, not yeah. for what you look like physically. Yeah, he does. He really does. I mean, and he, he cares. Like when I, when I have um, released some weight, which has happened here over the last few years, he, um, he, you know, he encourages me over it. He's like, Hey, I can tell your face is like thinning out, you know, which is good. <laughs> like, I like that. I know some women, they might feel like, Oh, you know, why are you even saying, but yeah, I like that. Quiet. <laughs> He tells me, you know, like I've noticed it or I've noticed you're like, you're more confident or you're more radiant. He won't just always make it about weight, um, which is really, really great for him, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So the way it all changed was I hit my highest weight in 2014. 13, 14, 15, uh, I was at 243 pounds was my highest weight. And I just couldn't believe that I was over 240 pounds. It just blew my mind. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, uh, I was there for a while, but what really changed is that a friend of mine who is a nutrition and fitness trainer, she introduced me to the concept of loving myself. So she was doing like a, you know, a, 16 week program or whatever. And I signed up for it because I'm like, I need a diet. <laughs> like I need somebody <laughs> to teach me what to do. Mm-hmm. And she, she had a program called love yourself fitness. And she, um, she introduced me to this concept of loving yourself. And that was a, it was really a new concept for me because I had lived my whole life under the, um, the value system of you put other people first, right? You love other people, you care for other people, put your own self last. It was almost like this idea of making yourself a martyr was somehow, um, 
a good a, a good thing to do. It was noble, uh, right? It's a it, noble right. It's product. noble. Yes, yeah. it's noble. And I still believe that. It, yes, absolutely. You don't want to live a selfish life. You want to be loving other people, but you do have to love yourself as well. Like if mm-hmm. you don't take care of you, right. then you're not going to be able to love other people. And now I've realized that if you're mean to yourself inside your own head, you Mm. do kind of give off a different vibe and a different energy Mm -hmm. than you do when you've really learned to appreciate yourself. It's so much easier to extend mercy and grace to other people when you're giving it to yourself. Absolutely. So yeah. So she introduced me to things like um, mirror work and looking in the mirror and learning to communicate with myself and talk to myself and appreciate the good things about myself. And that was the start of a journey. It's been a few years. Um, I'll be honest, her program is amazing. And some women have had great success on it. Mm -hmm. I did not... It For me personally, the loving yourself aspect of it was what I really needed at that time. I've done her program a few times, and every time what would happen is I would, I would release some weight, but I couldn't maintain whatever she was asking me to do. I couldn't keep doing it. And so then the weight would just creep back up when I would stop. So it was that same diet cycle over and over. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Uh And what I realized is because that was my pattern and that's what my whole life was. For me, I had to completely step back from anything that remotely resembled a diet at all. And that was part of that journey of writing down all the different diets I had done and realizing that for me, putting myself on a diet was a way of restricting myself. It was punishment. It was, um, you know, like you're not allowed to eat these things. And it, it hurt me inside because like my friend who was thin, who didn't have my issue, she's allowed to eat a donut, but I'm not. And it, it was a, it was, it wasn't loving to myself, but at the same time, Jenin, the problem is in the weight loss industry, it's like either you deal with the physical, right? And you need to work out and track your food and lower your carb intake and do all these things. Or it's, um, well, you have emotional issues. You need to deal with your emotions and you need to get in touch with what's driving you to eat. And if you do all that, then you're not really addressing the physical side of things. Like, and somehow the physical part's just going to magically fix itself. And what I've realized is that all of these things come together. And that's Mm -hmm. why now what I've realized for myself and what I'm starting to teach other women is that you have to address all of these things, the physical and the emotional and the spiritual and the mental, all of this works together. So Mm -hmm. over the last few years, as I've learned to love my body and which is kind of like the mental emotional part, and I've learned how to deal with stress and deal with my emotions so that I don't have to run out to McDonald's at 11 o'clock at night (laughs) to feel better (laughs) with my husband. Like I have other tools now to deal with those feelings (laughs) and with stress. Um, And the spiritual aspect of just like forgiving myself and being kind to myself and understanding Mm -hmm. that, that the universe, God, whatever people believe in, like it's okay to be at peace with those things and Give to understand yeah exactly mm-hmm. and then also the physical side of things like i actually yeah. now have run four half marathons and i have done a triathlon wow. right from somebody that hated exercise <laughs> to becoming this completely different person right and it's it's but it's because i I decided I, you know what, I want to be like, I'd always wanted to be a runner and I'd watch these little girls running down the street and I'd be like, I want to do that. But then I'd go out in my big body and try to lumber down the road and I'd be like, I can't breathe. You know, This is horrible. And, but then I realized like, if I really want to do that, then, Hey, maybe I start with walking and I just work on walking a mile and then walking two miles. And then I start jogging a little bit. And it took me a year to go from, I, don't like exercise to I'm running a half marathon. Yeah, and that's amazing. It is. Especially so for somebody who doesn't like to exercise. <laughs> yeah. The thought of doing a marathon is scary. Wow. So congratulations. Fun. Thank you. So that's my story, you know, focused on kind of what 
what it is that I'm doing mm-hmm. now. And, and I know that you, you wanted me to touch on my why, right? Like, yeah, I think that that ex- and share the impact it. that you want to make with, right. you know, like I talk about how some people just want to make an impact in their life, in their family. Some mm-hmm. people want to make an impact in their community where they live and some want to make an impact in the world. And yeah. either one is, is no judgment, you know, no, you that's all what great. works for you. So yep. I want yep. you to share as well what, kind of impact you want to make and where and you know yeah yeah so my dream and like I said I wasn't planning on doing it this year um but I realized I was really doing a lot of personal development work uh at the beginning of this year and when the shutdown happened it gave me even more time to be Mm -hmm. able to think and process like I know has happened for a lot of people and I realized is is a changing year (laughs) yeah I know definitely it's a changing year I realized deep down you know I've had this dream for whatever a long time 20 years maybe I've told myself once I lose all the weight I want to lose and once I figured out this weight thing I want to be able to do public speaking and I want to help other women with this Mm -hmm. Because I want so much for women who are still feeling enslaved by this diet mentality or enslaved by shame about this area of their life or by guilt or they feel like they're just a failure or they somehow feel like they're not good enough because they're not thin. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to offer them hope and I want to show them that there is a way out and that the way out is not necessarily, you know, finding the right diet because that's really what we're sold in the industry is if you get the right diet, then it's going to, it's going to fix it. Or, well, it's not the diet, it's you, you just need to do a better job of following it. Right. So, which then comes back to, it's your fault and, and right. it's that's more blame it and like. more mm-hmm. guilt. Yeah. So I really wanted to help women with this. And I realized this year that the only reason I was waiting is because I wasn't thin yet. And even though I've had this massive change, even though I have already gone down three sizes, even though I went from not, not like (laughs) exercise to running half marathons, I still felt like I'm not good enough to put myself out there and teach other women how to do it. Why? Because I'm not thin yet. And then I realized that mindset is exactly what I want to help women. (laughs) I know, but it got, it's fine. So why am I waiting? That's the exact opposite of what I would teach somebody. Right. So that's what women do who are overweight. We wait. We wait to um, get in front of a camera. We don't want to be on video. We wait to pursue our dream. We wait for the boyfriend. We wait for the husband because, well, I'm not thin yet. Once I'm thin, then all my dreams will come true. And so I, mm-hmm. I realized, no, I, I have to do this now. Like, even though I don't necessarily feel like I'm ready or I've proven myself, it's, I need to, I need to start speaking up. And that's my why is because I want women who are still trapped to hear from Mm -hmm. somebody like them that Mm -hmm. you can get out of it and there is a way out and Hey, it's not an overnight quick fix and I am not a size two and I never will be. You know, when I get when I get to where I want to be and I get to my goal weight, which I believe I will, then great, I'll keep speaking <coughs> about it. But I'm not going to wait until then to start offering people hope. So that is my why. And that's why I'm doing this now. Well, you know what? And when I feel like I'm not totally ready yet, but that's okay. Here I come anyway. <laughs> Here you are. You Here are I am. Ready. You are ready and you're doing it right now by sharing your wonderful story. And you know what, when it comes to the size two thing, I wouldn't even, even think about that kind of stuff because, you know, it's just messing with your mind when you worry about the tag on your clothes, Mm -hmm. what it says. That is true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that's Mm -hmm. not healthy for everyone to be that small. It's not. And honestly, one of my very best friends, she has the opposite problem of me is it's very hard for her to keep weight on. Like her body just sheds it. And she feels like no matter how much she eats, she can't 
Um, she can't, she would like to be curvier, right? She would like to have more weight on her body, but that's just not the way God built her. And so, and she actually feels a lot of hesitation about talking about her feelings because often from other women, she'll get shamed for that. Like, oh yeah, you have such a problem. Oh, what a hard problem to have. Right. But that really is her, that really is her struggle. And I think that Mm -hmm. we, as women, we all have to honor each other, no matter what size we are, that like, we're all beautiful, you know, and we all may want to be healthier or care Mm -hmm. about our bodies more, but you're right. It's not about what size the tag says. It's about how we feel about ourselves really. Um, is what, and, and are we, are we living healthy and are we really, is our body showing what we really want to be on the inside, right? Mm -hmm. From the inside out, are we reflecting our inside on the outside? That's really what it comes down to, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And it's also, I think the point that you made a while ago about you have to just love yourself, Mm -hmm. no matter where you are, and Mm -hmm. what your struggle is. You know, so yeah, Yeah. so wonderful. So your program that you have, um, do you, are you strictly only working with women? Or do you work with men? I'm only working with women mm-hmm. right now. I okay. mean, I know that men need it too. And I'm sorry. I'm sure you'll That's find okay. some guys to help you. There's other people out there who can That's work right. with the men. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I, my heart is for women. You know, my heart is for women that are just feeling like this battle that we face. Yeah. And I want, I really wanted to create a sisterhood, a supportive community mm-hmm. where women can come in and feel um, like they can really talk about their real stuff and how they feel. And, um, and so that's part of what I want to build with weight release is that supportive community of women where it's not just me coaching somebody, it's all of us in it together is really what, what I'm hoping to create. Absolutely. We have to help each other, you Mm -hmm. know, in, in so many areas of our life. And, and if we just all work together, amazing things can happen. Yeah, it's really yeah. true. Like you and I, we didn't know each other a week ago. And look at this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And thank you so much for, for coming on because you felt like you weren't ready. But you know what? It sounds like all these years you were preparing for this moment to yeah. share with our viewers your incredible story. And I know there are many, many women out there who struggle like you have. And I know you can help them. So I want you to share with our viewers, how they can get in touch with you if they like what you're you're saying and they might be, you know, they might want to know more about you and maybe even get into your program. So yeah, absolutely. Share. That would be great. In fact, I'm right now I am just so much in the beginning stages of this that right okay. now I'm just I am literally just building a Facebook group that is free that anybody can join just so that we can keep talking about Mm -hmm. what this is and what's going into this program that I'm currently building. So they can find that Facebook group by either Googling my name, um, Carla Grubb, and it will say Carla Grubb weight release. Um, And then there is a link to the group and the group is called weight release community. Weight release is all one word. So just weight release community. Or if anyone wants to email me, they can totally just email me directly. And my email is weight release with Carla at gmail.com. So that's where you can find me for right now. Okay, wonderful. I'll put a lot of put put all of that in the show notes as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're so lovely. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I love the flower. I wish I was in Hawaii so I could get my little flower. (laughs) Yeah, this is called the plumeria flower. And we have um, these trees all over the island. And we have a small one in our backyard. So so beautiful. Oh, thank you. I love it. Thank Um, you so much for having me on today. I'm very excited. And I'm very excited to see the other interviews you do and just the different people of impact that want to want Mm -hmm. really want to change people's lives and make impacts on the world. I do. You know, my goal is to interview at least one person from as many different countries around the world too. not only in the U S but yes, I want other people's perspective from different parts of the world, not just in Hawaii. So I'm hoping I, if anyone's watching and you know, anyone from another part of the world, please let me know. Because I want to share all these beautiful stories that people like you have. 
That is so great. I love it. Yeah, thank you, thank Jeanette. You. I'm so glad I got to come. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. And I wish you all the best for your business and, and send our, my aloha to you, which is like love. I was going to say, isn't aloha like hello and goodbye in Hawaii? Yeah, we use it in multiple ways. Okay. Hello, goodbye, saying I love you, Aww, you know, all that kind of great. stuff. Mm -hmm. What is, uh, what is mahalo? What does that mean? Thank is you. That that's thank you. Well, mahalo then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and aloha. <laughs> aloha. All right. You take care and have a good day. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Aloha. You're welcome. Aloha. Bye. Bye.